And here we are, another CJRB knife. And I got five of these all at one time. Because I was really interested in taking a look at the designs that they had initially on the market. And these are available on the market to buy at anywhere from like $43 to $39. Get them from, uh, oh, by the way, get them from White Mountain. Uh, LTK is the discount code, get 10% off. So whether it's $39 or if it's $41 or $43, uh, you know, you get 10% off and free shipping. So buy them from my buddy, Justin. And this is the 1904. And I have the 1901 through 1905. So there you go. This is the 1904. It's called the Crag. C-R-A-G. And it's a stonewash D2 blade. Of course, made in China by CJRB Knives. Artisan Knives. It's the budget line from Artisan. This one's got a little bit of a pivot surround. little color there for that. I imagine that might be... Either a coated steel or aluminum, because that 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 doesn't look like it could be titanium, and I, I'm guessing no, absolutely. Um, here's your liners. They're not skeletonized and they're not embedded. I prefer that they show, so I like them. They're thick and they're chunky, but it gives a knife some heft. And this is a knife that at $39.99 or probably net 35 delivered, you're going to be able to use as just a worker, user. You know, it's not your $300 safe queen. Uh, front choil, sharpening, and ability to go forward. And will it cut something? Let's hope it does. It's a knife. Okay, that works. Yes, yes, it's pretty sharp right out of the box. Box ain't nothing to brag around, brag about, but you know, who cares? I mean, at this price point, no. 1904. CJ, I thought, first I was looking, I, I've got some kind of optical problems with my brain and my eyes. Because I was going, ORB, what's that? It's CJRB. No backspacer, but... Right hand, left hand, deep carry, okay? Grippy G10 scales come in different colors, or you can get the carbon fiber laminate. I'm not really big on carbon fiber laminate necessarily. Hell, I'm just going to go G10 because it's more grippy, and this is that kind of a knife anyhow. And this one should be good. little slicer. You got a flipper tab here. It's kind of a stocky piece of work so it's not exactly slender it's not exactly disappearing uh you know it's if it was really short and candid forward it might be a little less obvious but there you go and this knife is not meant to be a delicate less obvious type thing this is really in your face Regardless, oh, let me throw it on the scales. It does look a bit chunky, and it's probably the heaviest of the five I have. And yeah, it is. Um, well, you can say you can you can tell that just by the the height of the blade, the height of the scales. There's just a lot more material in there. 153 grams, and let's roll it around to ounces. Yeah, 5.4 ounces. All the rest of them are under five. And then, of course, let me see. This one, the most slender of them all, is at 3.8 ounces. And this is actually the bigger knife of all of them. And it is. Um, this one's like 3.7 inch blade, 8 and 3 eighths overall. Where the crag, I don't think it's that big. I think it's probably a 3.5, 8 and a quarter. And it is, it's a 3.5. Maybe you could argue a little less than that based on where this bolster hits. But if you take it down here, three and a half, 90 millimeters, I'm just approximating, just a bit over eight inches, eight and, a, eight and an eighth, and 20 and a half centimeters. So, no, 
It's not that big. It just feels that way in the hand. And the pass-through is really easy to get to. It's really easy to disengage. The liner lock, and there's your lockup. That's pretty sound right there. That's 40% at least. No blade player lock rock on this. Looks like the blade is centered. Just nice. I actually did take this one apart, though. This is one of two. I took the Centros apart as well. I thought this Centros didn't have bearings. It does. But when I got it, uh, it, it wouldn't even move when I disengaged the blade uh, because it was a little wound up a little tight there on the pivot. So, but, oh my God, it's smooth and beautiful now. Uh, and this one, yes, all the rest of them I figured, they're flippers, they're, they're bearings, and they are. And without taking all the time to take it apart and everything, I took it apart. There's the D-shaped pivot, which is nice, and ceramic bearings, ceramic detent ball. Very easy to take apart and put back together. Of course, these are full steel liners that are not skeletonized. So, yeah, I guess if you want to bitch and moan, they cheaped out by not skeletonizing the liners. And they cheaped out by not putting a backspacer on it. But this is a knife that's very, very price sensitive. So you're going to maybe skip a step or two uh, by you know, eliminating some non-necessary, and I, I don't know how much you're really going to lose by skeletonizing the liners, regardless. And most of these knives are, of the five, are under five ounces. This one's over five ounces. So I don't think you'd save yourself a whole nother ounce, even if you skeletonize the liners. Um, you got a lanyard hole right or left, deep carry, tip up. And this is just a matter, this kind of knife is one, do you like that kind of cleaver look? Uh, it feels good in the hand, the ergos are good, reverse grip, yes, as well. So it's not demanding a lot of you here. No individual finger choils along here, just, just grab and go. I mean, I guess you could, if your finger uh, might rest up here, possibly. Mine doesn't, but, you know, it depends on the size of your hand. Pocket clip works really well. I like the, the function of this. And they're, they're flexible, but not too flexible. So, yeah. I mean, I thought this was an interesting design. But I think, you know, all the five that I have, each one of them have their own kind of personality and design and it flows you know it disappears the back of the blade into the bolster um i think they used about as much as they could here with the blade so yeah i think uh it's, it's a good overall well thought out knife that functions pretty well uh, so it's just a matter of personal taste at that point Kind of like this gray because it's almost like a steel blue in a way. Kind of a bluish gray. Interesting. I, I kind of like this color better than the green and definitely better than uh, this laminate carbon fiber. I think this would be really nice in that bluish gray, don't you think? This is really a cool... this. This is the Taiga, the 1903, and uh, this may be about the most attractive design of the bunch other than the uh, Mallory design. I just keep not wanting to kick it open. The 1905, Dylan Mallory's got his name on this. I think this is probably the most sensible, usable of the bunch. Uh, but... And I just took the one I'm reviewing and took it off the screen. How about that? There you go. Uh, the sizes are very, very similar on all these knives. Check it out. This is actually the longest one. Believe it or not, 
the briar. Come on. The centros. And then this is the crag. This is the taiga. And this is the tala. T-A-L-L-A. -L -L this is an interesting one too. And this one is actually contoured G10. So this is the only one of these five that's a contoured G10. I can't speak for this one. The reason I can't is because whenever you get a laminate carbon fiber like this, it's always flat. So the G10 version of this might be contoured. I don't know. But it is a good looking knife, isn't it? I like the design. And of course the Centros probably still edging it out as my favorite this one's pretty close to number two uh yeah and really probably number three here the tala but centros taiga tala anything else named t start with a t no briar <laughs> craig so we're good cjrb knives Interesting. It'll be interesting to see what they do going forward. They're all in D2 steel and you know, you might want to check my spreadsheet. We have tested artisan knives in D2. They weren't the CJRB, but since these are made by artisan, obviously they're getting probably getting heat treated in the same oven, the same formula, etc. And the heat treat has been really good. So far, or at least the Rockwell numbers, I should correct myself. The Rockwell numbers have been good. Performance, I don't know. I don't know overall cutting performance. I haven't seen anything from our group on that. Uh, so it might be interesting to have them cut test. And then of course, you know, what are you gonna send them? I think I'd send them this because I think the blade geometry, thickness behind the edge, uh, this whole setup would probably cut better, obviously, than this, okay? Even though this is, by the way, 0.53 of an inch, 13.6, let's see what we got for, so 3 millimeter, 0.12, yeah, they're all falling in that range of 0 0.52, 0 0.53 thickness here and all three millimeter blade lengths. But no, this is probably not gonna be the cutting champion if you put it to a cut test. That's just my guess. Probably this one would be, or maybe the briar. Interesting though. Uh, I'd like to see that. Cause just because it's got, it's really hard Rockwell wise, doesn't mean that you might have not have a fatigued edge or that you they might not have done the tempering correctly some there's so many parts of getting a heat treat correct but at least if it's hard it's better than being soft so we got that much down the road and i would i would really think these are at least a 60 or better the ones that we tested in the past I think we're over 60, 61, two or three in that range. Check the spreadsheet. And there we go. The whole group of them, really interesting, of course, the crag. And this is the 05, this is the Centros. This is the Briar, that's the 02. The Tala is the 01 model. And of course, the Taiga is the Oh, 1903 model. So there we go. And not necessarily in any order at all. CJRB. They look pretty good. Thank you so much. You know what we do around here. We love them knives. Put your comments down below. Let me know if you have any of these knives and what you think. And stay sharp.